Good afternoon and welcome to another one of the Veterans Forums. Today is kind of a unique program where, you know, we have guys and gals who have served in any branch of the service uh, share their experiences with us on this program so that they become a, a living record, if you will, of what they've done. Every one of the programs we've had so far, and there have been quite a few of them, thank goodness, uh, there's a little different twist. Now, today's guest is another, if you will, unique situation, but it's worth your while to listen to it as it develops. My name is Bob Stevens, and it's my pleasure to welcome you today. It's the 13th of April, 2009. Our guest today is Peter Zuber. I'll ask Pete to introduce himself, spell his last name, and then we'll take off from there. Pete, you're on. Okay, my name is Pete Zuber. I live at 32 Highlawn Drive. I was born March 23rd, 1927 in Pittsfield, and I lived Pittsfield all my life. I was the youngest of seven children, and I, the, the, the Cazaras, which are half-brothers, they're K-U-Z-A-R-A, -A. there's three half-brothers and one half-sister, and the Zubers, two brothers. Our family did well in the Depression. My father worked at the Berkshire Woolen Mill, and he, and he built our house in 1931-32 during the Depression. We had, a lar we had large gardens, all kinds of fruit trees, a cow, chickens, geese, uh, a coal cellar to store the things in. Our mother canned and sewed a lot. Uh, she, uh, my father got samples from the mill for free and she made shirts, jackets, pants, and also from the baker we got the empty flour bags and she bleached yep. them and used that, that for sewing. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, most of my, our brothers, most of my brothers hunted, fished, and some trapped. One year we had four deer hanging in the garage, so we had a lot of, we got a lot of meat. I graduated from high school machine shop in June of 44. I worked at the GE till I went into the Merchant Marine. I tried to join the Navy in, uh, oh, September, I think it was uh, August, September, but I got rejected on my eyes. I have 20-20 corrected vision, but bad, I guess, 10-20, okay, uncorrected. The wall kept getting they wouldn't in the accept way. You. <laughs> right, they wouldn't accept you. Uh, Three of my brothers were already in the service at that time. Frank was in the, was a, he was in the CCs before he was drafted. He was drafted in January 41. So Pearl, right after Pearl Harbor, he was, he had, he was sent to the South Pacific. And he, he was there four years till the war ended. Mike was in the Air Force and he was a prisoner of war at that time. He, he was in Germany. He was shot down over Vienna on his, on his 36th mission. And Stanley was in the Navy in London, England, and he was on a destroyer for the rest of the war. My service dates, and I guess that's the way I'll have to put them, I was in a Merchant Marine from November 3rd, 1944 to April 15, 1947. I was in Marine Corps Inactive Reserve from January 8th, 48th to December 26th, 1950. Then I was in the U.S. Army Active Duty January 2nd, 1951 to December 19th, 1952. Then inactive reserve till January 23rd, 1957. Wow! So that's where that, I got all That's this. quite a trail. Now let's 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 start back, if you will. Um, Merchant Marine. Mm -hmm. What branch? Well, you, I guess you started at Sheepshead Bay under the Coast Guard or something yeah, like that. Because this is why I say it makes you unique. I want to get that developed. Yeah, we, when we joined them, we were sent to Sheepshead Bay, and it was on. Our basic training was under the Coast Guard. It was the Maritime Service is what it was called. You went in, we took an oath just like any other military people do, which was good for all the time we're in the service, and mm -hmm. and all. And we were issued uniforms, and I was gonna go there, but that's all right. Okay. Uh, we were issued uniforms the same as the Navy, except we had a different shoulder patch and different things. And we took basic training there. And then I'll get into our basic training okay. if you want as it's I go It's your down. show, you do it as you will. Okay, so anyway, we. There was four of us who had joined, who were all re rejects for the service. <laughs> <laughs> we seen the sign, the Merchant Marine wants you and all that, you know. Yeah. So we drove to Boston in a Model A Ford, and two of them were rejected. Uh, my friend from school and I got in. So the, the, the fellow that got rejected drove us back to Boston where we reported. Helping the veterans. Yeah, he helped us out. So then we took a train to New York, the two of us, and then a subway to Sheepshead Bay, and then we walked into the base. And we, that's where we started our basic. We had two weeks of basic in Sheepshead Bay. So it was drilling, physical exercises, classes, uh, swimming, 
how to swim if you ever were caught with oil burning yeah. on the surface. Splash. You know, that's not really, but I mean, yeah. what to do if you did what that. What to do if. All that, uh, and basically the beginning of basic. And the rest of the basic we were shipped to Baltimore to the training ship. I think it was American Mariner, I can't confirm that, it was the training ship. It was a cargo passenger ship. So you had all the equipment of a merchant ship plus a passenger ship, you know, mm -hmm. for a capacity to hold students. So it was really on the job training and yeah. exposition. So we, we got on the ship and we'd leave Baltimore and, on a Monday morning early, go down Chesapeake Bay into the widest areas down there and cruise around our anchor. And there we'd do our lifeboat drills. We had class, we had gunnery. We're supposed well, to have 30 hours of gunnery, okay? What kind of guns? 20 you? millimeter mostly, because on uh, four, the three, four, or five inch guns that were on the stern or bow, there were Navy gun crews. All we ever did there, if you were assigned, was pass the ammunition. Oh, load. Yeah, yeah from, from the locker coming up in okay. the magazine you'd had. That was your assignment. Every gun had merchant marine sh uh, mariners on it, okay. on the ship, okay? Good. So, but uh, the 30 hours, a lot of time you're in the back of the class. The one thing I can remember, you had to learn how to cock the 20 millimeter, which is kind of unique. It's a hard thing to cock, to get a shell in there, the first okay. one. But uh, I don't know if I got 30 hours or not, but uh, half the time I was in the back of the class. You know. But that was uh, on a training ship. Mm -hmm. Well, the lifeboats, lowering the lifeboats and doing all, uh, abandoned ship drill, fire drills, this is what they really pushed you on. Do you have anything like uh, the boatswain as far as steering and that kind of stuff, or was that somebody else's crew? No, completely? in the lifeboats you steered and you, you directed the crew. Oh. Because you're going to take a test on this. Okay. So when we finished that, we had Christmas leave in 44, and then we were part, and I said in Times Square, New Year's Eve of 45. Really, huh? 44, 45. And then we went back to Sheepshead <laughs> Bay and where we did our tests in lifeboats. You take command of a lifeboat and with a full crew rowing from the dock and out a ways and back into the dock and your gradient in order to get your papers. Mm -hmm. Once you had got that, you, then you were issued your papers, you were discharged from the maritime service. Oh. Now you became a merchant mar and a mariner. So anyway, the, we went, we're set to New York City for the hotel room for the first night and there we were, we were, we were, not, we were the first ship was automatically, they told you where to go ex with one exception was in New York, they offered us the SS Gripsholm, which is a Swedish uh, neutral ship, exchange ship, which is going to Tokyo, Japan during the war. No way. And, uh, and they were paying kroners, and, and we didn't know whether they could take you off. They said they couldn't take you off in Japan if you want, but we refused it. We, we had that right. Mm -hmm. So we did go to Norfolk, and then we, we got a, in a schoolhouse where we lived there for until we got an assignment. And then we were assigned to a, a a ship at nine o'clock at night we went and then they took us down the way back on the with a propeller a big room with six cots and that was our bunks for the trip free free just sitting free on an empty, empty big room and we had a footlocker so that's where i was a dishwasher in a salon that was my job it took me a few days to figure out where it was you know they, they lead you up way up and uh so uh, from there, we, we went out of Norfolk, we went to, uh, to, to Kingston, Jamaica. We didn't need a, a convoy then because a passenger ship is faster than a submarine. And most of your big troop ships didn't need convoys. They were too fast for submarines. Oh. All right, so that's why they didn't need it. So we went to Kingston, Jamaica. We, we had the passengers. And the passengers were all Jamaicans and British Hondurans going back to their countries. And we went from Kingston to Belize and, and, and unloaded them there. They were hired by the government to work in the farms in the United States during the war <clears throat> for one year. And after the year, they were sent home. And then a new group would be brought up. And they were a lot of going back. We asked them how they liked it. And a lot of them were very disappointed because uh, the United States was segregated. And the N-word was used frequently against them. Oh, yeah. And they, and they, they just hated it. Yeah. Okay. So, so they, they weren't too proud of the United States. And the other ones coming up, we came to New York and they'd never seen winter. <laughs> oh, that must have been fun. So the, goosebumps was, on goosebumps. Yep. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, that was the first ship. Okay. After I, got there. I, went, I went home for a few days leave. And after the first ship, I just want to explain something. In the Mercury, yeah. it was your responsibility to go wherever you wanted to any port you can get a ship that had a union hall that you could sign in or join if not a member of the union or go to one of the non-union companies. Each union represented so many companies mm -hmm. that, you know, under that union. Or you could go to Standard Oil was a, a non-union, Army Transport Command, which I had been in then, was a non-union. But I went, we went to, uh, to Baltimore, John and I, 
and we asked the seaman where to go. Well, we met a seaman on the street. He said, well, there's an SUP union hall down there. So we went there and joined the union. <coughs> and they have a big blackboard and all the ship openings that are in the harbor that they're looking for. Oh, okay. Because we're in a steward department because of our waivers. Yeah, we're still mm -hmm. in. So I took an officer's mess job, and John took the crew mess on the <coughs> ship. And that was, uh, we were out at Sparrows Point. And when he left there, and then we joined a big convoy in Hampton Roads. It was, I checked back, it was a 50-ship convoy with six, uh, six or eight escorts going wow. over. With DEs? DEs and uh, Canadian Corvettes. Well, Corvettes. And there was a, one bigger ship. The Greyhounds. Yeah. And uh, we had no problem going over to Gibraltar. And once in Gibraltar, we then uh, broke convoy. And uh, you went on your own. This was a, the, the most dangerous zone. It was a... And, and our thing, we got a double pay plus five dollars a day because the worst combat zone, you know, the most, most dangerous was the Mediterranean, and there was places in the Pacific like it. Uh -huh. And then we went to Oran, got orders, went to Naples, and Naples we tied up in this beautiful pier. It was a big columns in that. It must have been for the big passenger liners when, when there was, when Mussolini was in control, because we had uh, six railroad engines uh, on the decks that they had to get bigger cranes to get them off. But it's the first time we really seen war. All our guard, the garbage, we go down on the pier, and there'd be children, and women, old men fighting to get our the garbage. garbage. Yeah. Let's fight for the guard for food. So of course we put a lot of stuff in the garbage yeah. after that. And we did tour the town. We went to the Emperor's Palace and seen a concert. But there was a lot of. It was, it was sad to see all the children with no legs, arms missing, people you know, all over the place. Well, anyway, we loaded bombs on, in the holes and uh, Sherman tanks on deck, and we went north to Laverno, Leghorn, Italy. And when we came into Leghorn, uh, the breakwater, of course, was, all, uh, was blocked with ships, but the Navy cleared it. The, the ships sunk all over the harbor there. And when we came into the thing, we tied up at the pier. We were third in line and uh, unloaded it. We had German prisoners unloading. They'd come down marching and singing their songs in German. They come on board and then they had on the German naval officers in charge of it. And, but the guys would offer, the Germans that could talk English would offer you to sell you for cigarettes or money, uh, portraits, if you had a little picture of your girlfriend oh, or wife, they'd make a, a beautiful oil yeah. painting. Yeah, they'd make a beautiful portrait. Mm -hmm. Or, and isn't you want pistols? Mm -hmm. I bought a P-38 pistol. And they said, you need ammunition? I said, no, just a pistol. I forget what I gave him, but I said, well, how are you gonna do this? He said, oh, I'll deliver it tonight after dark. He says, and I said, how do you do that? He says, well, the guards, they get, they get a certain yeah, percentage. They pay the guard, too. I said, well, why don't you escape and go back to the Germany? Well, they're fighting about 30 miles on the mountains. <laughs> he said, no, and the war was nearly over. Okay. Okay, very close. He goes, we're in, in Germany already at the time. And he said, no, 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 we'll get a few dollars so we can go home, we can get something. Yeah. Okay, so we'd, then we, we, uh, we had a day off. We went, uh, they had the roads all mar taped off where to clear the mines. So we, we hitchhiked to Pisa. Went into oh, the tower? Uh, yeah, we went to the village, the wall village, went up the tower, and then the cathedral. Then we hitchhiked back in a tank. Okay. And that was about it. They skipped the beer gardens. We used to go, they used to fill the tables with beer, and we met the Japanese regimental combat team there that won all the honors oh, in World War II from Hawaii. Oh, well, the Nisai. Nisais. Yeah. yeah, they were all over the place. They were on R&R. &R. They we'd weren't drink, Japanese, we'd, they were Hawaiian. No, Hawaiian Japanese. Yeah, yeah and most okay. of them, every one had a purple heart. Okay. Oh, yeah. And uh, so from there, we uh, back to Iran, orders, then went to Gibraltar, we formed convoy. And then uh, we got air cover out three, 500 miles out from Casablanca. And then past the Azores, uh, a Navy tanker, uh, a small Navy uh, tanker being towed by a Navy tug had engine trouble, so they had to fall back. And next thing we know on the horizon, you can see the smoke rising up, they got hit. And uh, we're, then they start dropping uh, depth charges in our convoy. Mm -hmm. And they, they're unbelievable how powerful they are, even oh, though, yeah. like the ships, I don't know, about, about three to 500 yards yeah. apart. And your bulkhead almost comes in yeah. and out. But then we got home, out to the Gulf Stream and we broke convoy and we, we went south and we round the Keys into, into New Orleans and went, you know, come home. Mm -hmm. And I come home on leave on that one. So I was home on V-Day, V-E-Day. Good. Okay, the third ship was a, a C2 cargo ship. I got out of Baltimore. This is, I, I was allowed to check to the de change to the deck crew here. Okay. I got out of the storage department. I was an ordinary seaman. We went from Baltimore, no convoy, 
and our gun crews were then removed. We had gun crews on uh, about 18, 20 people, gun crews. They were all ship. Navy going. All Navy yeah. that we could work with. But now the war is over. So all they got is a few Navy people to maintain the guns that we have on board. Okay. Uh, no more uh, lieutenant or, you know, a Navy lieutenant or a big crew on there. So we just have a couple Navy people. And mm. we went to Naples and then to Marseille, France. And, and uh, one of the things we had to do on the way home, we had every empty bunk had to be filled by a GI coming home. Okay, transport, Yeah, Yeah, that's, that's what we did, and we came yeah. back to things. That VJ day, I was home on leave again. But I happened to meet, my brother Mike was freed from the prisoner of war. He was in France, they beefed him up a little, and he was home on leave to get, prior to getting discharged, and Stanley was home on leave, the one in the Navy. So I met him up North Street. And you hoisted it. Oh, we did, we had a big time. I'll bet you hoisted We had a great time you. before yeah. we back. So, that's great. Yeah, so then I went back and let me get my story straight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, I went back and I went to New York. I didn't go with my buddy. He went to Baltimore. I went to New York. I went down by Wall Street, the Union headquarters there, and I got a ship there. The first ship I got. Now I'm in the in the deck department. I've also moved up to able-bodied seaman now. I can take an able-bodied seaman job after that first one. That's rank. better paying. Because there, there were very short a seaman. Oh. Normally, you'd have to take tests to get mm -hmm. able-bodied. You'd have to go into the Coast Guard, take your test okay. to qualify for able-bodied. But wartime, and they were desperate up till 1947 for seamen at the time. Such shortage. Wow. That's why they're mo I can move up. Okay. Then we went up the Hudson River, and it's a T2 tanker, eight million, eight million gallons, I guess the whole, the biggest tanker in World War II. And we went up to Hudson, at, uh, up to uh, Kingston, and we loaded fresh water. Fresh water? Fresh water. Okay. And we took that to Curacao, Venezuela, and sold the fresh water and loaded bunker fuels, you know, fuels for ships and stuff. In the same tanks? Huh? Oh, yeah. You, what, what you do, you butter, yeah. Well, there's a process called butterworthing. When, the, when a tanker has oil or different and changing cargoes, they put these huge vents up and they open the, all the tops of the tanks up, the, mm -hmm. your tanks in the holes. To circulate air, then he st they got steam cleaners inside it. Blast oh, okay, steam that's what I was wondering because you know, oil and yeah. drinking water, no yeah. way. Oh, well, they could change cargoes, but they have to clean the butter. We okay. did it once you know, when I was on that ship. Right. But then we went through the canal, and then we went to, we had a hurricane on the way out to the Pacific, and they hit 30 to 50 foot waves hitting us, yeah. and that was quite a thing. But we, then we went right uh, to, to Kwajalein, and from Kwajalein, was just to give us orders to go to Manila. And on the way through Manila, I, I, I don't know if I, I, we, the first time I ever sort of, uh, seen what was a, like a meter coming down, I was on bow watch at night, and it was ball lightning. And you hear, oh. so yeah, they call it ball. The yeah, mate knew what it was. Right up. The, the, the chief mate knew it. He's seen yeah. it before. I never seen it before. And we went to, to Manila. And from Manila, we, we, we were part, we, because the, the, the ships, the Navy and everything, all were still waiting for the uh, invasion of Japan. The, it was, the war was over, but the ships didn't have nowhere to go. No place to go, right. Right. So we had to bring fuel from, you know, because we were going to mm -hmm. be in the invasion originally, but even though the war was over, we still had to go with the fuel to, for the ships. Yeah. So we anchored off Corregidor, and then after we got in, mo moved in closer, and, and Manila was bombed to pieces. All the big buildings were gone, you know, there. Did but you we, have any leave while you're in Manila? Uh, just or? in the evening. Okay. In the evening after work, after eight to five, after five you could go out. Oh. Because we're eight to five in port. All we're right. not on watch in, the, in port. And then we, from there, I guess we didn't unload everything. We went to Saipan in the Tenia, you know, in, Marsh, in the Mariana Islands, and um, Saipan we unloaded onto ships, the Navy ships. We, tie, you know, go next to. We okay. bumped right into one, one fact. Oh. And we Real got close. Boom, yeah, boom, boom. we banged, and the Navy <laughs> commander was kind of teed off. And uh, we got to shore there, and they had a beer garden on a beach where you can, 3.2, you get all you mm -hmm. want. And there, of course, the war was over, and it was not too far. It was over a couple months or three months. And they had truck pools that, you know, that they didn't use anymore. Most of the GIs were getting out of there. All the people were getting out, so these trucks were lined up all over the place. Oh, yeah. They, all they needed was a battery. So a couple bucks you pay somebody, you get your battery. Gas was no problem. So we took a truck and rode all around the island, the banana plantation. We went to the cliffs where all the Japanese committed suicide because suicide, yeah. they thought the Americans would eat them, the civilians. Mm -hmm. Then we searched the caves where the fighting was and couldn't find the skull. All the skulls were gone, but you'd still find in one big cave where they used a flamethrower on them, there's still the leggings with the part of the bodies mm -hmm. in them and the shoes. You know, you got remnants of things. Did no, they smell? No, 
I didn't smell it. Oh. No, surprised. We had but quite the, a but, deep breath in yeah, Okinawa. I'm surprised at that because it was wrapped up tight, I think. Yeah. But uh, no, so that's, uh, we finished unloading there. And then we had to go, over. now we got new orders, so we went to Darwin, Australia. Down to Darwin, which kind of trip down through by New Guinea down, and we got orders there. Then we went across the Indian Ocean up to the Persian Gulf to Abadan, Iran, up the Euphrates River, up to Abadan, Iran, which was a oil, big oil facility mm -hmm. there. We had a tough time because of current getting the ship in. We had to pull it in with the lines, you know. Like winch yourself up. Yeah, yeah. And there, we, we partially loaded, but we got a chance to go ashore, and the temperature was 120 degrees but it's the dry heat. And the bar and all them, the buildings are like two feet thick mud walls and they're cooler inside oh, yeah. because they're so thick. But we went and had a beer or something, but they, the unique thing was they had a bathroom and in the bathroom they just have a, it's a little stall with two footprints and it's tile floor with a little gutter going out through the side, water running through it, and a vase, vase with water. So you just stand with your back to the wall, stand on the steps and do whatever. And then water ran out and everything with it. Out, right out to the street? Out to the, between the, the, the buildings. Yuck. <laughs> and uh, as we went out and it went up to this little brook. And in the little brook are the woman washing clothes and children oh, playing. Oh, no. Okay. And, you know, you talk about tough things that are happening. But that was the unique part of it. We ended up down the bottom of the Gulf, further loaded some more. And then we went to Bahrain, uh, Saudi Arabia. And I guess we got some, because you've got different tanks. You can take different mm -hmm. type of fuel and stuff. And from there, uh, let's see, where were we? We're, we're in Japan. Yeah, we went to Manila. We went back to Manila and then up to Yokosuka, Japan. And Yokosuka, Japan, we unloaded in uh, the big German, uh, Japanese battleship that was used in the H-bomb test was there. The battleship Iowa was, Iowa was there, our battleship. And all kinds of Japanese destroyers and stuff. And I ran the launch, and I went over to the Navy ship to get some supplies, and I ran, first time I ever met my uh, classmate of mine, Norm Quillard. I, when I come up there. Pittsfield? At Pittsfield, he went to class with me. He was in my yeah. class. And there he was, and he was on the Navy supply ship. And from there, of course, we came home to San yeah. Pedro, California. And uh, then after, the, after there, the last ship I was on, which was, I guess, the best ship you can handle, and it was the sixth ship, and it was the Drew, it was the SS Drew Victory. It was a cargo ship. It was a second, it's a second voyage, so it's new. And it went right around. The, we went right around the world. We were really scheduled just to go through the Suez and up to Karachi, India, and back. But we went to, from New York. We went to Alexandria, Virginia. The British were fighting. The people were fighting the British for independence. This oh, is you mean in e Egypt? Not Egypt. Not yes, Alexandria, Egypt. Egypt. Oh, okay. The, right. the, the British were fighting. Yeah. Uh, the, the Egyptians were fighting the British for independence. We went to Haifa, Palestine. The Jews were fighting. The Jewish people were fighting for independence against the British. We went through Suez Canal, up to Karachi. They were fighting all, or working at independence all through India. We had every major port in India up to Calcutta, including Colombo, Ceylon. And then in Calcutta, we were there a week, but in a, a few unique things there, when it's way up a river, Calcutta is, up a river, was the poverty in, that you see there, you know. Uh, our longshoremen were, were Indians at work, and we found out they got a nickel a day. F uh, full day's work? Full day's work was a nickel. So we thought, wow, is that lousy? And they said, one of, one of them told us, no, 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 good pay, good pay. It's, it's good pay. He says, you go inland and work on the farms, you get one anna a day. Ten, a, ten a annas equal a penny. What's with ten, but they have mud, you know, grass huts that they yeah. can, but the, 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 that the owner keeps for them. But they get one anna a day. Okay. So you that saw was, abject poverty. Oh, then, on, then the main streets where the banks and nice buildings are, at 5 o'clock at night or 6 o'clock when the banks close and most of the traffic goes, out come the families. Each one has his, un, his own area in on front the of the sidewalk. bank and they bring their little mats, straw mats or what are the, the bamboo mats. Yeah. For, and they got their children, their little stove and they cook their dinners and they sleep there until morning in front of these places. And then I don't know where to go for the day. Yeah. But that's the poverty of India. Wow. So then we, we left there. We went down through, uh, so yeah, down through, the, through uh, by Singapore and up to Manila, then Manila. Then we went over to Tencent, China, uh, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Tinian in the Marian Isle, in the Mariana Islands. That was where the B-29 bomber left for the, yeah, the atomic Gay, bomb. Yeah. yeah, we ended up, because we had no longshoremen, 
the Navy helped us and they got paid extra. We got paid extra for a little empty oil drums. We filled the ship with empty oil drums. And from there, I don't know why. Empty he oil? Empty, empty oil drums to fill the whole ship. And we huh. took we from there to Shanghai, China, up the Yangtze River, then the Wangpu River. And you tie up, uh, they don't have many piers there. They tie you up in the middle of the river. Yeah, the big buoys. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the middle, and then they unload you there. And, they, and there, uh, the Chinese longshoremen unloaded us. And they had to be watched as they stole everything. They, 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 they oh, couldn't yeah. screw or like fire hoses. They'd cut the nozzles off the brass fire hoses. They stole our dog. They ate them. Okay. <laughs> so then I used to run the launch to shore when I'd bring people to shore. And I'd taken a launch in one time, and there was a, a girl, a young, young girl, probably eight, nine years old, drowned. And then there's sandpans around with boat hooks pushing her off. Oh, yeah. They wouldn't let her get it. So we, we grabbed her and brought her in, and we, we met some GIs, and they took her. Find out that uh, if they had saved her, they got to support her the rest yeah. of her life. They inherited her. Because uh, girls are not wanted in China. Baby girls and uh, bigger girls are, are killed. Or, or, uh, bigger girls are sold to the government houses of prostitution yeah. under Chiang Kai-shek, the nationalists. And then we left there, and we went to Tsingtao, China, which is up north. You're going north now. Tsingtao had the American fleet there. was nice because... It was surrounded by the communists. They were there. That wasn't a fight. And the communists were fighting all over there. And take it, try to take China. So we had the American fleet there. So we were there, and I bought a few things there. And uh, that was that was a nice nice city. And from there we went up to Tencent, China. It's north, well, further north again, way up. And uh, the communists controlled Tencent. So we didn't couldn't get ashore there. We had to anchor way out. And from there we went back to San Francisco, and then we got a train home. So right around the world, mm -hmm. up and down. And so you did. That was my last You joined trip. several navies and saw a lot of the world then, huh? Yes. Wow. Well, they say the seven seas, I don't know if you know what the seven seas are. It's the North Pacific, South Pacific, South North Atlantic, South Atlantic, Indian Ocean, okay, Arctic Ocean, and Antarctic Ocean. I sailed four of them. <laughs> oh. uh, that, then we went, we got to San Francisco, we found out that it was uh, in 47 now, that they're cutting the ships back then. And so you couldn't get a job, and you know, they get people with more seniority, or you would never get one with our seniority, a couple of years, you know. So that was the end of my mercury, and I came home. And now's the switch. Now's the switch. How right. were we treated? Yeah. We were treated good as any other veteran by, home, by the people. The people treated good. But we could not join any veterans group. We were not recognized as a service organiz organization or as veterans, even. Three mariners sued the government and won us the rights to be class classified as veterans. And that was in 1988, 43 years after the war. I still don't know if we're accepted by the VFW right now. I don't know. Well, okay. did, wasn't that something that Rose Franklin Roosevelt He wanted us wanted under us the GI Bill, yeah. but he died and they dropped it. They, they gave it to the Secretary of the Air Force to pro process it. And he didn't want to have anything to do with it. Dropped it. So just some points of information. We were subject to court martial at all the times we were in the military. We were under articles of war, same as any yeah. other service. If wounded, you got treated the same as any other service. But if disabled, once you left the hospital, you're on your own. There was no such, such thing as a pension. No pensions at all. Yeah. You got a $6,000 death, death benefit. And except for a week in port, or so in port, when the ship was being loaded, we were in a war zone until we got back to the United States. We were always in a war zone. We lost more people in action than any service. The Merchant Marine, one in 26 were killed. The Marine Corps, one in 34. And the Army, one in 48. We were, being accused, of, we were accused of being overpaid. The merchant seamen received about the same pay as a Navy seaman. An able-bodied seaman, highest enlisted rank, the same as a Navy third-class petty officer. We did not receive any pay while on leave. We, not, we only got paid if we were working on a ship. POs, and there was 600 of them, I forget how many of them there was, they didn't get any pay wow. while they are POs. Okay. We had to have two years at sea to have sea time to get a certificate of, of substantially continuous service, which is my discharge, mm -hmm. so you wouldn't be drafted, an honorable discharge, so we would no longer be sub subjected to the draft. Well, you'll hear where that ended. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That doesn't make sense. And the last boat, the last U-boat sinking on, on our east coast was the SS Black Point on May 5, 1945, right before the war ended, just off uh, on Point Judith on Rhode Island. So mm -hmm. the submarines were still all on the coast. Oh, yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So President Roosevelt wanted that built past that we just tagged, but he, he died, and, and the, our, our chances went out with him. 
Then after I was home, uh, 19, it was January uh, 1948. We were down to Brass Trail with my buddy of mine. He mm -hmm. was in Guadalcanal in the Marines. And there was a tra Marine trailer out there on Summer Street, you know, trying to recruit people to, okay. join, the, in, to join the Marines. And we got talking with them, so they talked us into joining the inactive reserve, Frank and I. Don't worry about it. You only well, can be safe. called yeah. if you've got another war. You don't worry about it. <laughs> so we did join. And then uh, what happened? In November 1950, Korean War. Called up by Marine Corps for one year active duty. Took, I took my physical in Albany. Notified by the World War II Merchant Marine Discharge, no longer, no longer exempted me from being drafted for the Army for two years. Took a physical in Springfield. You mean they canceled? They canceled it. Truman canceled it. Truman or somebody canceled yeah. our discharge. Welcome home. Welcome home. So I was ordered to report Fort Devis January 2nd, 1951. I was ordered to report Paris Island January 5th, 1951. But I don't know if the Marines either let me go because of my eyes or what, but I had to go. I went down the draft board and they said, first come, first serve. So the Army had dibs on I, So I had to go two years, yeah. So I wasn't very happy about that when I went. So I went to Fort Devens for processing. Then we, they shipped us to Camp Rucker and I got assigned to the 423rd Construction Engineer Battalion for basic training. <coughs> Excuse me. As soon as we made it uh, started basic, I was made a squad leader because of my previous experience and previous basic. I guess they got it out of the records and they, they, said Bay way yeah, back yeah, when. Basic huh? training yeah, and that all that stuff so. will follow you through. Yeah, they 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 follow they check your, your oh, experience yeah. and all that, you know. And uh, our training was standard army. As construction engineers we were issued the fifteen round carbines. We didn't have the M ones or the yeah, the M ones were still in effect then. Okay. So we had a carbines. Our tra uh, we marched, hiked, obstacle courses, firing pistol, machine guns, rifle grenades, and regular grenades. We had all that training. And then I was sent to Fort Lee, Virginia for utility repair school. And, and the engineer construction, man, everybody went somewhere. Okay. Now, there's a little difference, though, between a construction and a combat oh, engineer. Oh, yeah. Can, give, me, give me the breakdown. Well, the combat engineers are front line. They, they work in front of the infantry to set them, yeah, get, they, make they them set a bridge. Or, the yeah, clean up, make a road, make a path, and they got... Uh, Rough equipment, set up a bridge. They got nothing, nothing fancy. We're a constru engineer construction battalion. We can build you a house, okay? We got all the equipment, we got saws, we got you know every type of equipment, plus heavy equipment, bulldozers, okay. payloader, you know, all, all, every type of equipment. Headquarters company would have that equipment. But we, uh, every, like in every squad, uh, I had my kit, which was a, uh, a big trunk, probably, four feet by three feet by one foot deep. And then it, it had saws, hammers, all, all kinds of stuff. All the good stuff. Huh? For my squad. Okay. And uh, so when I went to the utility repair school, I learned how to tear down and rebuild a Jeep engine. I learned how to uh, caulk a sewer pipe with the lead, do the leading, okay. clubbing. I had to learn how to wire electricity, do a 220 line, bring it down to 110 line for a wire this way, like the sewing machines we did. And, and how that, long did it take to do that? This was about a six week course. Uh, but All of that in six yeah, weeks? Yeah, we're full time going on. But this was, our, it, you were not, you had to go further training if you are going to specialize in one of them. Okay, okay so. This is a startup a utility school. You can do certain things, you know. Okay, but now just, this is just, if you would, that's almost just Yankee ingenuity. Yeah. You, you own a home, you got to know how to do the plumbing, the yeah. painting, and yeah. all that other yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But you were the, the top kick in that group then, huh? Yeah, well, that, 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 was, that was a good course. I was, uh, on the test you take, what, they tell me, what kind of test were you taking in the Army? Your MOS? MOS's. MOS. Okay. In our battalion, I think I was third oh. in the battalion. So I got top, top schools. I, was, I didn't know that. I found that out after. Okay. So after the utility repair school, we went back to, uh, uh, yeah, we went to, we went back. Uh, I want to ask one thing about Fort Lee, Virginia. It's a quartermaster center of the United States Army and also the WAC training area. But we were, uh, they have the 1,000 man mess halls for us. They got four entrances to the mess hall feeding. Oh, yeah, the biggies. All the right. big ones. Yeah. It was the best food I ever ate in the Army. <laughs> okay. Probably the most you could ever handle, too. Oh, what you did, you got in line, <coughs> they had pork chops, they, and they were really done. They had old time cooks in there. And the mashed potatoes were in the big tubs with melted butter on top and just big scoops. So you say, boy, what a great dinner. 
It's almost lunchtime. So you, so you go back out and get you, to get seconds. You had to go back out and back get in. Back in, yeah. I went in one time from pork chops to hot dogs to chicken, three times in line. That, that was the, what was there. They served whatever was left over after. But it was the best mess hall I ever had. Yeah. You ever have to do KP in a place like that? Yeah, I did. Oh yeah, so <laughs> I had to do it one better. day. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, they take care. The old timers make you work, but they take care. Oh yeah. Yeah. Name of the game. There we went back, and then we went sent on maneuvers. And uh, we had to put everything on trains. We went on trains up to Fort Bragg. And we didn't get into Fort Bragg. We were out, yeah, way out in the, uh, the boonies. Out in the boonies. Then. Yeah, they, they, each company was assigned a different area. And we took our trucks and stuff, and we went in the farmer's field. And it was said woods there. We had to clear the woods, but we couldn't put a nail in the woods because he can collect money for any damage to a street. Oh. So we, had to, we cleaned this woods out beautifully, slept in pup tents a couple nights, and then we put up our squad tents. And then we manufacturing outhouses for the basics, <laughs> basics. two holers, okay, for the army Over people. company two holer. <laughs> so we manufactured that, yeah. and for that, then we had to go clear the minefields. You know, the mines after the manures mm -hmm. are over, pick up the mines and all that. Well, they were just dummies, though, weren't they? Yeah. Well, a, a, a tank mine, the cap would yeah. go off. Yeah. That's all they ever did when they hit them. And yeah. we had to pick up them fields and that. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, we back by train back to uh, Rucker, and there we had. Uh, you know, there. Then we had to have retraining, a range retraining. But of course, a lot. I, I think, yeah, that was. Uh, oh, we had to collect snakes because new recruits coming into camp. It was Camp Rucker, by the way, at that time. But the new recruits never seen. They didn't know poison snakes. But that said, they had the most poisonous snakes and more of them there and bigger than anywhere in there I ever seen in the world. Rattlesnakes six feet long, three four inches thick. Well, a lot of cottonmouths. So the, the the the, the hospital wanted some samples to show no recruit. Oh. One day and they took cut it off. Okay, there's too many coming in. But anyway, so from there I uh, you yeah, know we, we let's see. Oh, I went to they sent me to utility farming school. That was. 12 weeks, I think, up in Fort uh, Belvoir, Camp Bel uh, Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Utility foreman school, there's utility foreman school, utility uh, uh, repairs, uh, utility foreman and construction foreman school and engineering, degree engineer schools. Mm -hmm. And we combined on, on big shows and stuff. But that with that course, we learned building with construction was one of the main ones. Sewage and water treatment was one of the main courses. We had to get a lot yeah, of that's basic. Yeah, so we could set up uh, water treatment plants, mm -hmm. sewage plants, and build construction. That was the basic. The main thing of that school was to teach you to know how to work with the people. You're not going to be the uh, carpenter. You're not going to be this. You're going to you know the you know how to do the stuff and how to tell and direct them. Okay. This is what you, we, so we, you we, delegated rather you than delegated. <laughs> you were now a foreman. Oh. You went in as a buck sergeant normally and graduated as sergeant first class. I went in on a corporal under waiver because all rank was frozen in the Korean War, only being issued in Korea. Anything above corporal was Korea. So we stayed at corporals. Just two of us was wavered and we had master sergeants, we had Air Force master sergeants, we had Army master sergeant, we had a Canadian sergeant first class. And you were still as two stripers? Uh, two stripers, yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't give us rank, but we, we, they let us in on a waiver. That guy and I, come, I came in third and he came in first in, in that class. Of them. But it was a good you. class. We learned yeah. public speaking, instruction, uh, we had fire and demonstrate. We went to Washington, D.C. and they took us to buildings being built, the big high rise. The engineers would tell us which engineer designed from the ground up, which engineer designed from the ground up, the top down. We went to the sewage treatment plants of Washington, D.C. Water treatment plants in Washington D.C. and and so you know, had a real good real and estimating cost estimating of your labor, <coughs> you know you had to do your estimate. It was a good course. Oh great! So I, when I graduated that, we came back, and then I started getting jobs. And I had a, my because the officers and sergeants got the jeeps and the and the small trucks. You know, okay, the, six the, buys and weapon carriers. Yeah, yeah. I, my I got the five ton dump truck. <laughs> huh? That was mine. I had a driver. It's type casting. <laughs> I know. Uh, I can, you don't want to write? That's oh, well, uh, some of the jobs, like one job I had was uh, 45th Infantry Division came into Camp Rucker from Minnesota, activated. And they had put new linoleums in all the floors in their barracks. There were hundreds of barracks. And we had to go put the molding around. That was one of our jobs. Just the molding? Just the molding. Specialists, huh? Yeah, so I had my, once in a while I had five guys, sometimes ten guys, and would have enough boxes and saws. One time it was raining, and I had Company B, 
and most of the company C. <laughs> and off, I was driving the Jeep and telling the officer where to assign his men. And we made up, we had to make up all kinds of boxes just to keep him busy for the day. But that then. Hurry up and wait. Yeah. And there we went up to McClellan where we did, uh, uh, as a company, we lived in squad tents and we uh, rebuilt bridges, we built uh, oh, a, a theater up there and all that. And the bridge I did was with the traffic going over, we, re we took out the big 18 inch square timbers underneath one side of the bridge that was rotted. And we took them out a partial at a time, put concrete in, and then held the bridge while the traffic was going on. Then took out where the supports were and did that yeah. area while all the traffic was Just going. kept them going. Yeah. Yeah. And the general come down one day, we were underneath working, and here comes this guy at fatigues, and how you doing? We talk, I look, it's a general. <laughs> wow. He comes down, he, he, he had his driver get us coffee and donuts for things. You guys are doing a tremendous job for me. Wow, there's okay. a change. There's a change. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So then we went back to, we ended up back in Rucker, and we had retraining, go fire bazookas and all that stuff. And meanwhile, the, most of the guys have been in a, a year and a half, you know, almost a year and a half. Okay, your time is almost So up, we went right? on the range, like the 50 caliber machine gun. They sent me and another guy up to 45th Infantry to get some on the, with the ground, a tripod mount. Mm -hmm. And they trained us how to use it. So we were the instructors. So we went on the range, and they have it barred in, you know, with the steel bars on oh, the yeah. top. You and couldn't depress Everybody it. was supposed to fire so many rounds. Well, what happens, the officers went over there under the bushes somewhere in the shade. Most all the company went over there. There was five of us here with all the ammunition. So we pulled the thing out, sandbagged it down. We start cutting the big pines down, there, way down the range, bang, bang, bang. So this is showing off. Yeah, yeah, just for fun. The same as these uh, with the carbines, you know, you mm -hmm. pop up targets, you got to, oh, yeah. nobody wanted to get their carbines dirty because you had to clean them so much. So me and a guy from Kentucky, we had about 20 rounds, a 50 round clip, 20 up each. And we'd fire out everything, you know, about bees and birds. Yeah, you had to clean a birds, bunch, you clean them all. Yeah, there. we had a lot of them. We had yeah. to clean the rifles. So uh, basically that was, that was my- uh, That's your army. That's my army thing, my projects and everything yeah. else. And when did you get I, discharged? I, I, Camp Rucker. No, but when? Oh, uh, December 19th, I think it was in 1952. Okay. Yeah, because it's deceiving, because it was January 51, and they, they let us out before Christmas. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now. And then I was. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, where am I? Take your time. Yeah, here we are. After the service, I went back to the GE. Oh. And, uh, uh. Well, let's just stop just a second. When you were out of the Army, what was your reaction when you got home? Did you feel uh, welcome, disappointed? Oh yeah, I was, glad to be, glad? I was glad to be back. And oh, yeah. well, you know, the thing when you first went, you look at the face in two years, it's a kind of depressing. Oh, yeah. But then I'm, I'm home, I'm happy, then I'm out, you know? Yeah. But uh, now you, when you got discharged though, you said you weren't allowed to join the VFW, the American no, Legion or no, anything. None of this, no. Finally though, sometime, what, in 82, 83, that Eight, was? 88. 88. We got recognized. So you finally got recognized, yeah. but so a then I got late. I got things from American Legion, but it, I, I said no way. Oh, you know I wouldn't join them. I could have got into American Legion because it's just the army. No, yeah. okay. Okay, my army thing, and, uh, but I didn't. Well, what was your experience in uh, afterwards? And when, you, as you say, you went back to GE. Were you then married? Or did you get married? No, I went and I worked a number of jobs. And in early '58, I was hired as a missile machinist in OP3. And they oh, worked no. in the beryllium machining. That uh -huh. was a poisonous metal, okay? Yeah. That, but there were parts for the guidance systems. Oh, yeah. Uh, secret parts. I was a union steward for 11 years, okay, down there. And then uh, I was, then I got, I was married, I was married while I was still in, uh, working on the floor. In September 61, I married Mary C. Ryan. She was a draftsman at G. She was up in the uh, south side as a draftsman. She, re, she, when their children came, she quit. And she quit having kids or quit work? Quit, no, she quit, she quit work. a big difference. She took, went, <laughs> stayed with the kids home. Good. Till the last one was in there, the last year, or the last one was the, yeah, got out of school and went to college. Then she went, worked in the hospital, Rogers Joint. And then one day, oh, then I was promoted, I, I was promoted, meanwhile, from after we got married, for, to an art NC programmer, which making tapes for the numerical control mm -hmm. machines. Yeah. And then I, I got uh, next, a couple of years there, then I was promoted to, four, I was offered a foreman job, power transformer, third shift, machine shop. So you left ordinance? Yeah, I left ordinance, went up there, and then I was in the, what do you call it, work sampling, when I got, got 
taken off there putting work sampling for six months. Then I got back to power as a foreman on second shift. Then I was a foreman in four different areas of ordnance in the machine shops. Hmm. And then I was assigned senior foreman at OP, or ordnance plant three. And the other foreman and planters were under me then. Good. Until, uh, oh, I forget what the year it was. And uh, then I was uh, sent to manufacturing engineering. We had new command come in. So they wanted their own people there. So hmm. I went to manufacturing engineering until I retired. Good. And we both retired in the September of 1988. Right. Now what's your kids doing now? You said before we oh. had a, uh, oh, yeah. some pretty I, well, good jobs. Let's give them and your wife some credit. They, yeah, we had three supported. children, two daughters, both college graduates. One where Kathy works in Yale New Haven Hospital as a radi radiological technician in the cardiac cath lab. She's got a good job. And the other one is, is Karen, and she's a, our, an RN case manager at Berkshire Medical. And my son, he's an Air Force Academy graduate. He was a prep school. He didn't quite make the, uh, the when you know they pick him for the, your senator Congress pick. Oh he yeah. Was, he was uh, the senator who died of cancer in Boston there. His, uh, he was the second choice. So a girl got the first choice. We went to Boston and the girl got the first choice but he, then they told him they got a letter back saying he were appointed to the prep school, Air Force prep school. Oh, good. So you join a regular Air Force, you, prep school trains you out of the prep school, class of 120, 100 something going to academy automatically. They're, they're under the presidential or vice presidential appointments. Wow. And he went to academy. Good. And he took a year stop out after two years. Now, is he still active in the No, he got this. He, was, he flew a helicopter for. In fact, when he went to helicopter training, was Fort Rucker. It's Sounds now familiar. Fort Rucker, and it's now the Army helicopter base. Yeah. I never did visit that. But he, he flew for, I don't know. He had 11 or 12 years in the back or something because of sitting on the steel bucket seats in the helicopter. Well, those things will he got shake disabled. the heck out yeah, of you. He got something bad, bad in his back. And he, oh, he went to school of physicians assistant. He's now a physician's assistant in Rutland, Vermont Hospital. Oh, yep. so they're all close to home. Huh? Yep. How yep. about grandkids? Any grandkids? Three. Or four, I'm sorry. One, one the, my son's granddaughter, she's 16, 16, mm. 17. Wow. And uh, I got twin, uh, older, seven, Eight-year-old boy and a two twin six-year-old. My daughter Kathy is in Connecticut. Well, wow. so good. Yeah. I'm going to cut off for a second. Uh, I wanted to show some of the paperwork, if you will, that uh, <laughs> Pete has picked up and had to do. Uh, I have them in some kind of an order. I'll try to hold them up so you can see them. Then I got to go through this. But uh, these are some of the things. Now this is a certification for Abel Seaman. Or seaman, yeah. Seaman. For seaman, okay. for seaman. Now, is that high enough? Can you see that clearly? Beautiful. Okay. That guy in the corner down, up oh, this corner here, I'm backwards. Uh, that's this young fellow that's sitting beside me right now. That's one piece of paper. Seems to be, a, here's another piece. Of, now, you can tell me what this one is. I can't read it backwards. That's a uh, lifeboat certificate. Okay, now, tell them what that means. Every merchant seaman has to have that, and you got to be certified to be a take command of a lifeboat. In other words, you can lower from the lowering it from the ship, unhitching it, taking tell it to the crew, do ship oars, do the oars, take, you know, take it away, and everything else, and be command of a lifeboat. You have to be able to do that. Okay. Every, each seaman has to have that. That's required. That's good. Oh, here's this another is, big piece. Uh, that's identification. This is just identification for what? When you went ashore, no matter where well, you went? Well, you had small ones, but that's your official certificate of ident identification. Okay, great. Now, it, it, this is where it, uh, I think it becomes, what's the best way to put it, interesting. We have three official recognized discharges. This first one, you can see, the United States Merchant Marine. That ended in what, 47? 47, April 47. 47. Then as you heard Pete talk, because of the way the politics went, if you're out so long, you had to be registered for the draft. Well, they indicated that they were out uh, carousing, is a good word, you saw yeah, the Marine yeah, thing. Yeah. We're single. This came as a result of that. This is his discharge from the inactive United States Marine Reserve, okay? And here's the last one, the Department of the Army of the United States. Three different branches, but as you heard, 
most of what he's did in the Merchant Marine was never recognized until what, 1988, 1988. or something like that. Yeah. Long after, some of them had long since gone, so they never really received what they did. Another example, though, of how these guys and gals have served in all the branches throughout the world. And that's what we're trying to do with this program. Before we go there, though, uh, open, yeah, open it. we call it fruit salad. I do. Not being disrespectful, but can you get in a good shot of that? I'm trying to get it so that the, the lights don't hit. There we go. Pete, you want to kind of run through this? Can you see it? So that yeah. You, okay, let's go. These are the uh, ribbons for zone ribbons, they call them. This is Atlantic War Zone with a certificate for it. The middle one is a uh, Mediterranean War Zone. The third one is the Victory Medal after, World, after the war. The left top pin is the Army Transport Command that I was in. The next one is the Merchant Marine pin. The next little pin is the United States Marine Corps pin that I was in. And the bottom ones are my United States Army construction engineers in the, in the 423 Battalion pins when I was in the Army. Good. So, again, he did his bit. He did a lot of it. And you've heard the story. Each one of them is a little different than the other. But the, the bottom line is, and this is my standard appeal, if you will, to you gals and guys who have served anywhere in active service, any branch at any time, we need and we'd like to have you come forward, if you will, and share those experiences with us so that they will not be lost or changed or forgotten. You put a lot of time in collectively, uh, we'll never be able to account for it all. A lot of the suffering and the aggravation that went along with it. Each one of you did an important job. And that's all we're trying to do is to give you a shot here to come and talk about it. You, know, you don't have to be Audie Murphy or anything like that. But whatever you did, wherever you did it, contributed to what we ultimately call the victory. Maybe <laughs> this will be the last big war. We don't know. Let's hope so. But whatever you did, We'd like to have you share it with us. So again, come and see us. At the end of the program, you'll see where to sign up, call, and so on. But more important, if you're on the cusp, come on and talk to us. We won't try to sell you anything, but we will try to make it worth your while to share what you've done. Again, we thank you and hope to see you soon. Keep us in mind. Goodbye. <laughs>